Hey everybody, this is Riker Rider, and welcome to Square's first foray into the world of contemporary RPGs. The reason why this game was called Final Fantasy is because for them it was the Final Fantasy. Or so they thought. Square was having a really tough time with the uh, video game crash of the 1980s, so they went all out with the rest of their funds and produced one last hurrah. And it's this game. This game has six character classes as opposed to the one that uh, predecessors did. Fighters... Fighters are just your smashers. Just like Fighter says in 8-bit theater, I like swords. Thief... He's really worthless until the late game. The only thing he's good for is running from battle. Black belts are broken in this game, and I'm not going to use one for that reason. Red mages, they're the jack of all trades. White mages are your pure healers, and black mages are your pure offensive casters. I feel the best classes in this game uh, for a beginning party would be fighter, black belt, white mage, black mage. That produces the most balance in your party, and the most variety. However, I'm going to do something a little bit different, and those of you who have played other Final Fantasy games may notice a pattern in the way I'm naming my characters. For this particular playthrough of uh, Final Fantasy, I am going to be using the 8-Bit Theater Party. Now, for those of you who haven't read 8-Bit Theater, or don't even know what it is, I'm going to provide a link in the video description and please, read this webcomic. It is absolutely hilarious, and you're not going to get half the humor in this uh, LP if you don't read the webcomic. It is well worth your time. Now, unlike most RPGs, Final Fantasy throws you right into the thick of things. You have no idea what you're supposed to be doing, no idea where you're going. The only thing that you know is that you're near town. So, let's do what any smart D&D &D player would do their first time through town. Make a gather information check! There are four orbs that we'll need to revive the power of in order to finish the game. Unfortunately, the first quarter of the game consists of gaining enough power to get to any of the dungeons that have these orbs in them. And there are a few other quests we need to complete before we even have that chance. Remember the name Lucon later in the game. Doesn't the start of every RPG involve saving the princess? Or at least all the NES ones. Well, it looks like the locals of Corneria Town are pointing us to the castle, so let's go gather more information there. And no, Red Mage, you can't just say, I rolled a natural 20 on my gather information check. Unfortunately, that's not how console RPGs work. Red Mage has to be my favorite character in 8-Bit Theater, just because he breaks the fourth wall constantly. He is the D&D character. As a matter of fact, several times during the webcomic you can see him pulling out a character sheet. Although ironically, the first person to pull out a reference book was Black Mage. Which considering later in the game or the later in the webcomic what happens is really out of character for him. Yes, we know we're supposed to be saving the princess. Can't you tell us anything that's more useful than that? Remember the name Garland for later. I think that's all the NPCs except the ones by the vault. See, unlike future RPGs in the more modern era, contemporary RPGs in the 1980s and 1990s didn't exactly hold your hand. If you wanted to figure out what to do, you had to go around town and ask for information. What a concept! treasury was locked by the Mystic Key and given to the Prince of Elfland. Remember that for later. Yes, we know. 
and those two doors are the palace treasury. Once you have the key, you'll need to come back here and uh, open all the treasure boxes within those rooms. Well, I believe that's everybody on this floor, so let's go up to the second floor and talk to the king. So Garland is in a temple to the northwest of town. That is a key piece of information that you need to actually find out where you're supposed to be going. We're probably them, yeah. So Garland has kidnapped the princess, and she is at the northwest temple. We need to head there, but we are nowhere near near properly equipped. Unlike in future versions of the game, gold is definitely a precious commodity, especially early in the game. You won't be able to buy everything. The first thing that I would do is definitely buy weapons and armor. At this point in the game, if you have a white mage, buy an iron hammer. If you have a black belt, buy a wooden nunchuck. If you have a black mage, buy a wooden staff, otherwise buy rapiers for everyone. The rest of the weapons just aren't worth it, especially not the small knife. The amount of gold that these cost at this point in the game is negligible. Armor is a little bit more expensive. Uh, I would recommend buying chain armor for a fighter if you have one. And unfortunately, the Thief nor the Red Mage can equip wooden armor, so you'll have to buy uh, just regular old clothes for everybody else. It's not worth... Uh, of note, it's not really worth buying armor for a Black Belt if you have one, because the main draw to a Black Belt is his evasion. Now, the benefit to having a Red Mage is that he can learn both Red Magic and Black Magic, but one... He doesn't have as many spell charges as a white mage or a black mage, but he does have, uh... uh... Yeah, like I said, he can learn both white and black, but he gets less spell charges, and he can't ever get the higher level spells. Uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to buy Cure for your white mage or red mage, and none of the other spells are really worth it, ever. Uh, at the Black Magic Shop, you'll want to buy either Fire or Lightning 1 for your Black Mage right now. If you have the money later, you can get it for your Red Mage too. Uh, sleep puts all the uh, monsters in a battle to sleep, but its accuracy is so low that it's not worth it. Lock is supposed to decrease an enemy's evasion, but it's bugged in this version. And Lightning, you'll probably want to pick up later, uh, closer to the time you get to the second half of Chapter 1. Uh, the white magic, uh, fog adds to one party member's defense, um, ruse adds to the caster, the, the, uh, the, the spellcaster's, uh, evasion, and, um, harm will damage all undead enemies, but it's only useful if you're a white mage. None of the items we really have gold for. But there are a couple other services in town. The clinic is where you get people revived if they die in battle, and this is until Chapter 3, and that's if you have a White Mage, the only way to revive people. Going to the inn, unlike in previous versions of the game, will, or in later versions of the game, excuse me, will not revive party members. And in this particular version of the game, staying at the inn is the only way to, or it's the only way to save your game outside of using, say, a tent or any other item that uh, restores your HP and can only be used on the world map. There are no save points in this game, so you'll either have to go to the inn or use a tent to save. Well, now that we've bought everything, uh, we should probably go hunting for monsters, get ourselves some experience and gold. Oh wait, hang on. I think I forgot something. Yeah, I did! I actually forgot to equip my weapons and armor! It'd be a good idea to do that so I don't get completely obliterated by the weakest enemies in the game. Uh, 
I have Cure for my Red Mage and Fire for my Black Mage. <laughs> ah, I never knew that it told you that if you had no items, it told you, you had no items. I thought it would just bring up a blank screen. There we go. Uh, oh, come on! Seriously? You're going to give me an ambush in the first encounter of the game? Well, it doesn't matter because these guys are so easy. Uh, these guys are imps, or later, or in later versions, they're translated as goblins. They're considered giant-type enemies, which really isn't relevant right now, or even in this particular version of the game at all. They have 8 hit points, they have a damage rating of 4, and they give 6 experience and 6 gold. They can only hit one time, and at this point they'll deal 1 damage to your fighter, and between 2 and 7 damage to your other party members. You'll only run into these guys outside of town, and I would strongly recommend grinding on these guys until you hit level 2. Then you can go farther north of town for more dangerous enemies. Yay, we win! Unfortunately, and this takes... Uh, this is more noteworthy in the early per uh, portions of the game. Experience gained is split between the party members and rounded down. So what I'm going to do in between this video and the next one is grind up to level 2 and maybe buy some heal potions and a couple pure potions at the shop. Depends on how much money I have. So I'll see you guys next time at level 2 with all the prerequisite items on Let's Play Final Fantasy. Have a good one.